guys, welcome to No Filter HD. I'm continuing on with the Lamasoft, the Jeff Mentor story by Digital Eclipse. Just a fantastic game. Uh, this episode, we're going to finish off part two, the Harry Years, and getting into some cool games here. All kinds of camels and assorted beasties, so I can't wait. So I'm going to read you what's on the screen as well as play the games as before. And just full disclosure, I have a little bit of time left over at the end, so I go back and play a few of the games I feel like I needed to give more time to. So I'll start doing that in the future in this series as well. So let me know what you think about Lamasop, the Jet Venture story. I think this is a fantastic interactive, interactive documentary. I'm just blown away. Just great. And this chapter really delivers, so I just love it. So uh, thank you for tuning in uh, to Ballistic Hoppy Boy, No Filter HD. Um, just love covering these classic games. It's such a great part of history. Jeff Mentor's just freaking amazing. So let's continue on. So we left off with part two, the Harriers, 42% explored. As Lamasop grows, Jeff finds a signature style, filling his work with all manner of furry beasties. And let's go ahead and dig right in here. Just a great chapter. All right. And I believe we left off... We're talking about a convention or something. Let's, or no, it was Hover Bover. Uh, let's go back to there. Here it is. Hover Bover. While in Birmingham for the Midland Computer Fair, Jeff and his father lodged at a farmhouse bed and breakfast surrounded by immaculately maintained gardens. This gave them the idea for Hover Bover, a game about clipping the grass with a borrowed, well, technically stolen lawnmower. <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at this cart. I'll try to had, hide these captions in the future so you can see the pictures better. But definitely an interesting game. I feel like this is uh, such a different game from Mentor at the time because he was playing, he was making such different games. Two llamas, 83, Commodore 64. Your lawn is overgrown, but your mower is broken. Borrow, steal your neighbors and try to mow your entire lawn without getting caught in this unique gardening action game. <laughs> and I love that picture. Let's go ahead and play this here.
Okay, I know I'm not the world's greatest at hover bover. Um, <laughs> it's a tough game. Got everything coming at you. Anyway, here's the instructions here. And there's another version of this coming up, so we'll get another chance to play it. So let's continue on here. Interesting game. Notable and quotable. One morning, as we all sat in the dining room enjoying our breakfast, one of us commented on the farmhouse garden, which was a well-tended combination of close mown lawn and high box hedges. By the time the meal had finished, Jeff and I devised the principal features for a new game, a lawn mowing game in which an angry neighbor would pursue a house owner who had borrowed his mower without permission. Patrick mentored Jeff's father. I wonder if he has any experience in that. <laughs> Probably not. Really funny. Uh, just a unique game. What's in a name? As opposed to old cylinder style lawn mowers, a rotary mower's blades hover off the ground. One maker of conventional mowers adopted the tagline, a lot less buffer than a hover. Buffer meaning being British slang for bother, hence the title Hover Buffer. And here is an old school lawnmower talking about here. Very cool. Hover Buffer ad, a full page black and white ad featuring the Hover Buffer cover debuted in the September 83 issues of British computer magazines. Let's take a look at this here. Love it. Hover Buffer, Atari 8 bit version. The Atari version of Hover Buffer was released in 1984. And we're going to get into this one here. Cool cart. Gordon Goes Gardening. A preliminary design for the unproduced sequel to Hover Buffer titled Gordle, sorry, Gordon Goes Gardening. Um, hard to say that, tongue twister. Gordon goes gardening. <laughs> but I love this. It says wife is on the lounge here. If you look at this closely, wife loyalty. <laughs> like she's going to leave you. I think this is so awesome. I love Mentor's sense of humor. Very dark and I just love it. All right, moving on here. Commodore Computer Show, June 83. Lamasoft's booth at the Commodore Computer Show was just a few months after the Midland Computer Fair. The key difference that can be seen in this booth is that Matrix Grid Runner 2 is now available for both the VIC-20 and the C64. I just love these old con pictures. Look at young Jeff Mentor. I totally play games with that guy and stop by his booth for like 10 hours, if you let me. Meta Llamas. Properly titled Metagalactic Llamas Battle at the Edge of Time, possibly the most stupidly named game of all time, says Jeff. Meta Llamas was another space shooter starring a camelid, this time the one that gave Jeff gave the developer its name. The twist was that you could and often needed to reflect your shots off a force field to hit your targets. Yes, you have to in this game. <laughs> so I actually enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and play this. Complexity 2 Llamas for the VIC-20 and 83. Another animal themed shoot -em up with a twist. Use the force field to reflect your shots and bounce them into enemies on the ground. I love this cover art here. Let's play it. What a fun game, you guys. I really enjoyed this one. Let's take a look at the instructions here. Feel free to zoom in and pause. Awesome. And let's keep going. Cool game. Meta Llamas C64 version. The C64 version of Meta Galactic Llamas featured slightly upgraded graphics, including smiley faces on the spider enemies. Let's zoom in on this one and play it. Awesome artwork. I love Steiner Lund's artwork there. Uh, two Llamas Complexity 84 C64. Um, so read this already. Let's go ahead and dig into this game. Really cool. I actually like this version a lot better.
Wow, that was so much fun. I love me some Metagalactic Llamas. Really cool. Actually, I like the title, too. <laughs> Might be the only one, I don't know. Let's keep on going. Meta Llamas ad, a full-page black and white ad from Metagalactic Llamas Battle at the Edge of Time, appeared in a September 83 computer magazine. Let's take a look at this. A mere five pounds 50. Unreleased sequel. Pages from Jeff's notebook with preliminary designs for the unproduced Vic-20 sequel, Metagalactic Llamas 2. Love these old notebook drawings. So cool. Okay. PCW Show, September 83. Jeff launched Hover Bover at the Personal Computer World Show in London on September 83, complete with the Flymo brand hover mower attached to the wall of the booth. Let's take a look. <laughs> I love it. So cool. He's just sitting there all cool, you know. I think that's his mom. I know it was a family business to a degree. Very cool. I love how they decorated that background. That's so cool. Look at Jeff. <laughs> He's like a video game rock star, y'all. Llamasoft's lineup. A full-color advertisement that began running in December 83 featured illustrations for each of the games in Llamasoft's growing library of bestsellers. And I love this little poster here. This is so cool. It's got all of his games. I guess so far he's wanting to put out there. I'd love this. Mount Pleasant. Revenge of the Mutant Camels. Having made Camels the antagonist of the previous game, Jeff felt bad about blasting his favorite beasties and turned the tables with Revenge of the Mutant Camels for C64. The focus is still on a giant ungulate on the march, but the player now controls the camel in question, shooting down waves of increasingly bizarre opponents. And love this one. And uh, this was a fun game for sure. Let's zoom in and play it. 83 Complexity 2 Llamas for the C64. Another shooter with massive camels, only this time you're the massive camel. Take down waves of increasingly ridiculous enemies. I love it. Let's play it.
awesome game, guys. Let me know what you think about Revenge of the Mutant Camels. Really fun game. I love how we turn the tables and have you in charge of the camel. I just love that. Awesome game. Design documents. Various notes and designs from the making of Revenge of the Mutant Camels, including Jeff's original handwritten draft of the manual. I love these handwritten drafts of the manuals. They are pretty darn cool. This one's pretty extensive. It looks like it's got some programming in here. The camels are back. I love it. Just talking about checker joystick again. Hints and tips, good scores, 907,000 it looks like in there. Revenge of the Mutant Camels ad, a two-page black and white llama soft ad from January 84 is the first to include Revenge of the Mutant Camels. Seven pounds, 50, I love it. That's so cool. Got its own full-page treatment, I love that. Computer Fair, December 83. At the final Computer Fair of 83 held in Wembley, London, LlamaSoft officially launched Revenge of the Mutant Camels. It held a high score competition at the show and the winner received an amazing prize. They got to travel with Jeff at a supersonic speeds in a Concorde jet to Egypt where they rode camels around the pyramids. I would love to hear about that trip. Let's take a look at this picture from the Computer Fair. Awesome, I love that. Got the camels on the table and everything. Hellgate. Apparently feeling that laser zone with its enemies and guns on two axes was not complex enough, Jeff produced a follow-up of sorts called Hellgate, in which the player had to simultaneously control four ships on each border of the screen, dealing with enemies from all directions. And this is an interesting game for sure. All hell is broken loose. I <laughs> love it. From 84. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this. Complexity of four llamas. Wow, for the VIC-20. Welcome to hell. In this intense arcade shooter, you control four ships on the top, bottom, and left and right edges of the screen. Let's play this, guys. Looks cool. Wow, it's actually a tough game. <laughs> I love it, though. Let me know what you think about Hellgate. Pretty neat. Let's continue on. Hellgate C64 version. After finishing Hellgate, Jeff took off a couple of days to pop the code on the 64, read a Lomasoft advertisement. By this point, Jeff felt he could not charge full price for a single conversion of a VIC-20 game that had no additional enhancements for the more powerful C64. So he sold it at a bargain price and themed it as a diversion. <laughs> really smart idea. And how nice of him, right? Wow, so this is a, a diversion to sheep and space. For Llamas Complexity, welcome to hell. Let's play it.
Wow, just a fun game. I really like that one. So let's go ahead and look at the manual here. Very cool, a little more extensive. I love it. And let's continue on. Hellgate cassette tape, C64. Here is a cassette tape for the Commodore 64 version of Hellgate. Looking more 80s to me. Mentor views. The whole idea of Hellgate was in part a deliberate attempt to overwhelm, but still to give enough control to be able to be at cause. I wanted to force entry to the zone, the place where you could go where you got so good at Robotron that you didn't really understand why. But damn, it feels good. The game feels impossible at first, but if you actually play it, then it starts to work. That's some great advice. He talks about this in the video coming up, too. Design documents. Notes on Hellgate from Jeff's design notebook, including a handwritten draft of the manual. Note that the working title was Lasergate, explicitly tying it back to Laser Zone. I actually really liked Laser Zone. That was a fun game. So I do not blame him at all. Maybe he felt like I needed the game needed uh, some more exposure, which I think it did, or does. Look at all these notes. <laughs> Love it. Hellgate Advertisement. Jeff celebrates the release of Hellgate for the VIC-20 and Commodore 64 with this predominantly text-based ad. Very cool. Notebook Draft. Jeff's original handwritten draft of this advertisement. Again, some more awesome notes here. I love all those notes. Let's go back up here and continue on. Hellgate Ad. An updated version of the Llama Soft Pool Page Full Color Ad. Adds Hellgate and other recently released titles. The hottest games in town from Llamasoft. I love it. LET Show Heathrow. Meta Llamas and Hellgate were on sale by January 84, shown in this photo of a Llamasoft computer fair stand. I love these fair pictures. Very cool. Sheep in Space. Yet another farm animal takes interstellar flight in sheep and space, developed for the C64. Both the top and bottom of the screen have their own landscapes and gravitational fields, and the player must navigate the shifting speeds and forces whilst keeping their sheepy well fed. Let's zoom in on this and play it. Cool looking art there from Steiner Lund, I believe. Uh, awesome. Uh, complexity of three llamas, C64 and 84, a scrolling shooter with a bovine protagonist. Remember to keep your sheep well fed by grazing on grass in between blasts. That's one thing I did not do. But let's go ahead and play this one.
Really cool game. Let me know what you guys think. Kind of hard for me. Uh, here's the instructions here. I didn't quite understand how to graze, but I'm sure if I played it more, I would get it. Let's continue on here. Sheep in Space, original painting. Being a fan of sci-fi and NASA images, nothing to do with space is a good start, it says artist Steiner Lund. I visited Jeff to see the game in action, so the artwork would be based on the game visuals. And I just love Steiner Lund's art. I mean, look at this. It's awesome. It's like an ELO art, like an album cover or Blue Oyster Cult or something. Sheep in Space, preliminary sketches. Steiner Lund's original concept sketches and references for the Sheep in Space box art, including three unused concepts. All cool. I love those little breakdowns of the pictures. Very cool. Birmingham 84. New release, Sheep in Space, took up the majority of the booth space at this May 84 computer show in the city of Birmingham. Love it. Sheep in Space adds, a sheep stares directly at the reader in this full-page magazine ad from mid-84. Let's take a look at this. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Design documents. Various notes including sprite designs from Sheep in Space. Drawing out the animals there. Very cool. So intricate, all these notes. I just love them. Adds just an extra depth to it all to see the creative process at work. All right, let's continue on. Steiner Lund. Beginning with Sheep in Space, Norway born airbrush artist Steiner Lund began creating the cover illustrations for Lomasoft's games. Although he created box art for a variety of publishers, Lund became closely associated with Lomasoft's games for a skillful translation of, of Jeff's in game pixels into airbrush fantasy art. Lunar Jeff, in addition to artwork for game boxes and ads, Jeff commissioned Steiner to create this portrait of his business card. Thankfully, he was fine to go along with my love of space art, but the touch of surrealism at Jeff has no problem breathing on the moon, Lund says. Love this picture. That's so great. Love that. Nature of the Beast, Issue 1. As part of his efforts to keep in touch directly with Lamasa fans, Jeff began producing a newsletter called Nature of the Beast in June 84. Topics covered in this first issue include the recent release of Sheep in Space, behind-the-scenes info about Lamasoft, and hints towards upcoming games. This is so cool and invaluable. I'm glad they have these here. Very cool. And I think there were just two or three issues of this, from what I've heard in this chapter anyway. AMC Atari 8-bit version. The Atari computer version of Attack of the Mutant Camels, released in late 84, had a significantly more vivid graphic presentation. <laughs> Love it. And let's go ahead and zoom on this and play it. Complexity 2 Llamas 84 for Atari 8-Bit. Inspired by a video game based on The Empire Strikes Back, Attack of the Mutant Camels became one of Llamasoft's signature games. A horizontal shoot 'em up in which the player must shoot down a slowly advancing line of genetically modified 90-foot high mutant camels. Let's play it. Definitely a fun one, guys. Here's the instruction manual for this cool game. I love it. Awesome. And let's go ahead and quit this and move on to the next. 
Attack of the Mutant Camel's original painting. Camel spitting flaming laser bolts. What's not to like, says artist Cider Lunt. The deep red magenta sky was achieved by using particularly vibrant inks. Just love his artwork. AMC goes Atari. The release of Attack of the Mutant Camels on the Atari platform was such a big announcement that it got its own full-page, full-color advertisement. Let's take a look at this. I freaking love it. All right. Llamasoft Ad, another Llamasoft ad that ran around the same time featured the company's hits, but mostly focused on a new illustration of its llama mascot atop a Peruvian mountain. Just love that. Cosmic Llama original painting. This was commissioned for a magazine ad, hence the large plain area at the top to allow for text and images, says artist Steiner Lund. I love that. I wonder what kind of ad that was for. Ancipital, a platform action game starring an anthropomorphic goat. Ancipital is unique in my Jeff Metro's works as it was not inspired by an arcade game, but by the home computer games of Ultimate Play the Game, later known as Rare. Rather than a series of... Whoops. Awesome game. Rather than a series of levels, Antis Ancipital takes place on a maze. A 10x10 10 10 maze. I love it. So uh, this is a bipedal goat-like creature who can walk on walls. Pretty interesting. Sounds cool. Let's play this, guys. The Five Goats of Power. Wow. Such an awesome game. I really like Incipital. I might go back and play this one at the end here. So here's some background to the battle. The instructions here. Very cool. It says don't walk into the walls. I think I had that problem. But I'll play this some more in a bit. So stay tuned. Really cool. Incipital original painting. A horned humanoid biped beast on a mission. Creating artwork for Jeff often required a touch of the otherworldly and strange, says artist Steiner Lund. Thankfully, surrealism is one of my favorite art movements. I love it. What a great little picture. I love this. wonder how many Christian parents that scared away. Incipital original painting with title. Steiner Lund's Incipital painting with the title. I love it. Mint reviews. The basic idea behind the game came from watching stuff like Attic, Attack, and Saber Wolf. Both these games feature large maps and plenty of action, but there doesn't seem to be a great variety of actual attackers. What I set out to do is create a large map with doors and keys in the manner of, a, of an adventure, but to present in each room a completely different attack wave. 
Very cool. Sippy's Portrait. Llama Soft Box Artist Steiner Lund at work on Insipital's cover illustration. Look how young he was back then compared to what we saw earlier. <laughs> really cool. Insipital ad. Insipital is the star of this late 84 magazine ad that touted its bizarre action and let fans know they could order a map of its sprawling maze. 50p. Love that. Nature of the Beast, issue 2. Insipital is the lead story in the September 84 issue of Nature of the Beast, Lombasoft's fan newsletter. Other features include Hover Bubbers released for Atari computers and a list of Jeff's favorite game controllers. This is just so awesome. I want to go back and actually read all these. Harry Happenings. Pods and Swarmers. <laughs> Love it. The first finish. Game reviewer Gary Penn finished Ancipital in record time and wrote to Jeff asking if he was the first player to report finishing it. Jeff sent back this car confirming his record achievement. This personal connection between Jeff and his fans was at the heart of Lamasoft's success. You were the first. Congratulations. I love that. Very cool. Let's go ahead and move on to the next situation here. The end of HESWare. Although it was one of the larger producers of computer games in the U.S., HESWare couldn't make the numbers add up and went bankrupt in 84. Suddenly, one of Lamasoft's primary sources of income shrunk to zero as it no longer had the backing of a publisher that could convert its inexpensive cassette tapes games to the more expensive cartridge uh, performed overseas. Ah, oh, sad. Jeff Design Philosophy. When you're playing a Lamasoft game, you're playing a little bit of Jeff Mentor. Learn about his theory of fun and how he designs games to achieve that feeling. Let's go ahead and play this awesome video, guys, and uh, play some games. To me, playing a game is not just about like you know, getting to the end and beating the final boss. The actual playing of the game should be the reward in and of itself. I mean, the, the journey should be the valuable part, not the conclusion. You don't just want to get to the end of the game, so I've, I've done that, I'll cross it off and put it aside. I want to go, you know, one of my games to be certain that people will come back to and think, oh, I'm going to play that. May not get my high score, may not even get to the end. I want to play it just because I really, really enjoy the experience playing. It's about listening to a music album. You listen to it again and again. You, you don't just listen to it once, oh, I've heard the lyrics now, I'll put that aside and I'll never listen to it again. You listen to it because it makes you feel good, because it's uplifting or because it speaks to you in some way. And that's what I want when I'm designing a game now. I want to make an experience which is just makes you smile, which you know, gives you that buzz, which just makes you feel good. He clearly loved games and came from a place of, you know, Atari and classic coin ops and when you think about game developers that, that learn their craft by like riffing on their favorite arcade games at the time, I think Jeff is very much of that school. Like a lot of the games that he was like, well, let me, what happens if you did Asteroids or you know, Missile Command or whatever, but like it was sheep and llamas and goats instead of those things. And that's how he made it his own. One of the things that fascinates me about some of the early games, because they were very constrained by hardware limitations, you could often only have a very small set of rules, but in the very best games, out of that small set of rules, you could get a lot of complex behaviours emerging. I mean, but essentially, it's all a feedback loop, though, isn't it? It's all about like you doing something and the game feeding something back to you. So basically, what you're doing when you're creating a game is you're fine-tuning that feedback loop. You're defining what it is. You're defining what the stimulus and response is going to be. And you try and make that satisfying for the player. I and mean, that could apply to any game, I think. That essentially, that, that is the core of what's happening. So what I'm doing when I'm trying to make a game, I'm trying to make you feel a particular way. I'm trying to make you feel that way by tuning this loop until it feels really good. There's a point where, for me, it clicks and it starts to feel nice. And when I feel that, then that's the direction I go in. Balancing and refining that feedback loop and making it feel good is the essence of game design, really. What, you what story you stick, stick on top of that is up to you. For me, game design isn't something that you like start out doing and you don't write down the whole design on a piece of paper and submit it to people as a pitch and then go off and hire programmers and make it. It's something that you make as you go along and it's fine-tuned as you, as, as you move in different directions. You, you feel the direction it needs to go in. But it's all about this feedback loop. That's the core of it. So some of the first things I do when I'm making a game is implement the player and give them you know, a little bit of a world to move around in and implement what they're going to do, be that shooting or jumping or whatever. 
and play with that and fine-tune that and get the feel for that. And as you do that, then often other little things will suggest themselves and you kind of can build on it and add more stuff to it. It will just take iteration. You'll just play it and play it and play it and play it and the bits which you don't like, you'll, 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 you'll file off if you like and the bits which you like, you can enhance. But for me, it's just playing it and playing it and playing it and playing it until I'm satisfied. And when I'm working on the game, I will be, you know, the last thing I do at night will be to play the game for an hour or so. Every single night I'll be playing it. Every single night I'll be, I'll be you know, just going over myself, what I like, what I don't like, which direction I need to go in. Um, it's just, it's uh, just a lot of hard work like that, really. I was quite guilty in some of my early game designs of like having difficulty because it went like that. And, it's not really the most effective way to to entertain your users, really. There's level three and the liquor ships in Iridus Alpha. Yeah, and the liquor ships were perhaps they were perhaps in the in the wrong slot. I mean, putting them on level three was perhaps not the kindest thing to do. <laughs> if I was redoing that game now, I would put them a bit further away. I feel like we don't talk about that game enough. There was some very interesting stuff going on in that game. There was like a split screen thing that was happening and it was very weird, and again, all of Jeff's games are weird, but, they, but they're weird in a way that um, you, they're almost kind of challenging you to like understand them. Like they're not, it's not clear what you're supposed to be doing, but the genius of them is like, if you just give it five minutes, give it 10 minutes, and it'll click, and you go, oh, now I get it. I learned something about difficulty. First, I've always been learning about difficulty. It's very important to allow people some levels of grace to find their way in before you start turning the screws. And then even when you do turn the screws and you've made somebody stagger through a level and they've maybe got like one life left, it can be nice to have a level that plateaus a bit or even goes down a bit and gives them a chance to recover and get a few lives back. So the early levels of my games now tend to be a lot less door slammy than they used to be back in the day. Certainly no level three liquor ships. Awesome video guys, love this. So let's move on here. We're at the end almost. And uh, I'll play some games after that because I will have some more time. Changing fortunes, the year 84 did not bring the British dystopia that George Orwell well predicted. But it did bring a great deal of computer games about farm animals in outer space. Soon the founder of Llamasoft would meet some real llamas and come back with a vision that was not a game at all. Wow. Wonder what this could be. So very cool guys. So after this, I next episode I will continue on to chapter three. After this, which is the light fantastic. Seeing the light, as 84 drew to a close, Lama Soft's success meant that Jeff had the financial freedom to fulfill some lifelong dreams, while experimenting with new software ideas, one of which was not a game at all. And it looks like we're going to talk about the light synthesizer, Color Space, which I love. I have on floppy. I love that. So I'm going to go ahead at the end here, guys. I've got about five or ten minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of games in here that I talked about this episode. Probably Metagalactic Llamas and... Maybe Ancipital. Or maybe Hellgate. So let's go ahead and go back. Here's the gameography you can go to as well. Let's go ahead and go back and to the play games area here. Here we go. Uh, the game library. So let's go ahead and take a look at Meta Llamas again. I'm a C64 and 84. I had a lot of fun with this one.
That's probably my favorite version of Metal Llamas. I just love that. I like the planets on there. So let's go ahead and play Insipid a little bit more from 84 for the C64. This one was fun too, but a little hard. Such an awesome game, guys. Let me know what you think. I also wanted to say thank you so much for watching No Filter HD. And next time, we'll take a look at the Light Fantastic Chapter 3 of Llama Soft, the Jeff Mentor Story. Subscribe, like, and comment. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Uh, appreciate you so much. Bye now.
You are watching Holistic Hot Network.